Hey everyone, it's me, Rami Marks, your Tangled Yogi out here in Northern California. Welcome to a Burst of Gratitude Zen Tangle inspired class. I'm about to teach this for the San Rafael Public Library, but I thought I would share it with you as well. So let's talk about the things we need for class today. I'm going to be working with a Micron PN pen, the Jelly Roll 10 from Sakura. This is a white gel pen. The IdentiPen from Sakura. If you don't have an IdentiPen, you can grab a Sharpie or another thick nib pen. I'm going to be working with a number two pencil and I'm going to be working with a blending stump. If you don't have one of these, just grab a Q-tip out of the bathroom. That works just fine. You know me, I'm a Prismacolor girl, so grab your Prismacolor pencils. And if you don't have Prismacolor pencils, don't worry about it. Grab your favorite color pencils and play along with us. I'm going to be working on the Genesis tile from the Tangled Yogi Shop. This is a tile that is four and a half inches by four and a half inches on super smooth paper. Really great for doing color pencil work. If you don't have one of these tiles, just grab your favorite sketch pad, make a square that's four and a half inches by four and a half inches, and you're ready to rock and roll. With that said, let's get started with a burst of gratitude. So many of you know that I like to start my classes with a little bit of a grounding exercise. So let's come into a comfortable seated position. Let your hands rest in your lap. Allow your shoulders to melt away from your ears. And if you're okay with it, allow your eyes to close for a moment. Letting your attention come to your breath here. And let's take in a few deep breaths. Breathing in through your nose and gently out through the mouth. Breathing in through the nose, feeling your body expand with breath and gently breathing out through the mouth and feeling the body relax and release. And one more time, in through the nose and out through the mouth. And just staying with your breath for a couple more moments, I'm going to share a quote that was the inspiration for this class. And this is from Melody Beattie. And she says that gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough and more. And just letting that simmer with you for a moment. Taking in a nice deep breath right here. Let it go with a sigh. And then gently now wiggling through your fingertips and your toes blinking your eyes open, and let's begin our practice. So let's go ahead and start by bringing a little dot right underneath our corner here. We're going to start to build our string, and then we're going to come away from the corner about an inch up top and make a little dot. I'm going to come down here and make a little dot right underneath the corner here, and then I'm going to come up about an inch and make a dot right there. Now I'm just going to go ahead and connect these two lines here and you know I'm doing it just by sight here. I'm not using a ruler but if you need to use a ruler you're more than welcome. And so I'm just connecting these two points with my pencil here. Now once I've had a chance to go across and I'm just going to go ahead and make that a little bit darker so that you can see it. I'm going to do an aura line that goes on either side of this little dividing line that we have here. So I'm going to come in right down here and do a very gentle aura that's right next to it. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So this is the first part of our string here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up from the bottom here about an inch and make a dot. And then I'm going to turn my tile and I'm going to make a line that's going to connect 
to the original piece. So you can see that it creates a little column here for us to work in. You can see that I'm also creating a narrow aura right next to that column. So go ahead and finish up yours. I'm going to finish up mine. And then when we come back, we're going to start in with our first tangle. Let's add to our string here just a little bit. I'm going to continue working with my graphite pencil. And I'm going to go ahead and divide this bottom column down here into three boxes. Now you can see that there's a quarter box right in here. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to very lightly draw in the rest of that box so that it makes it easier to do this tangle. Now the reason why I'm doing this with pencil is because we're going to bring in our bird a little bit later and we're going to need to do some erasing to make this easier. Okay, So let's talk about burst. Burst is such a cool tangle because it has a very geometric look to it and you can do so much with it. So just starting with my pencil here, I'm going to go ahead and do my north my south, my east, and my west. Okay, And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start to connect these dots with lines that are curved. Now once I have that inside, I'm going to make another set of dots and I'm going to aura those lines that I just did. Once I have that, I'm going to connect to the outer rims of that diamond. Now many of you know the tangle crescent moon. We're going to use some crescent moon here and all it is is an arch with a couple of auras behind it. And I'm going to do two auras here. And I'm going to try to make all my arches about the same size. Coming over here, and over here. So once you've got that, you can go into the next two and go ahead and do that. Now I'll come back and we're going to do this one together. So just go ahead and do burst in both of these little boxes first with your graphite pencil. Have fun with it. So some of you might not know this, but when I was younger, I was diagnosed with dyslexia. And so when I see something that's impeding uh, a tangle, it can be very difficult for me to do. And so for some of you who may have this same issue, I thought this might be a great way to remedy the situation. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play into that half square that we've gotten there. And I'm going to go ahead and build the diamond like I normally would. And then I'll go ahead and I'll build the internal aura like I normally would. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in the rims. And then I'm going to start to build the tangle. Just how I normally would. For me, this just makes it so that I can see everything clearly. So now once I've got that tangle in there, you can see here's the dividing line right there that I'm going to let this go. So I'll just come in and start to erase. And then I'll come in and get into that border just for a minute. And then that way I don't have to worry about underlap and overlap. It looks like it keeps going just fine. So go ahead and finish up yours using that technique. Hopefully that works for you. And then when you're ready, we're going to come back and start to work inside of this triangle. So I'm going to continue to work with my graphite pencil because part of the bird is going to slip down into burst. Okay, so the way that this is going to work is we're going to start by creating the back of the bird here. And I've come down from the top about an inch and I'm going to start to make an aura line right along next to that central channel. 
I'm going to let it come down into burst and I'm going to stop right before I get to the edge. And you can see that I'm using a little bit more pressure on the pencil so that I can see it. Now I'm going to go ahead and start to make what looks like the shape of a D. So I'm just going to round off, coming down, and then I'm going to aura along this bottom line here. So I'm going to turn my tile, and then just before I get to that edge over here, I'm going to round off, come down, and then come back up again and meet with that first line that we have here. Okay. Now I can come in here and just take out burst that's inside of the tail. And that way it makes it look like it's overlapping onto the tangle. Now I'm going to go ahead and just leave that alone and we're going to start to come back in with a little bit of pen. So now that I have this the way that I want it, I can come back in and start to work with burst. And I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do with the first one and then I'll talk about what we're going to do with the one near the tail. Okay? So all I'm doing is inking in burst, taking my time. Really when you take your time, the quality of your lines is so much better. And just going over what we have here. And for me, whenever I'm doing an overdraw like this, it just makes me feel more familiar with the tangle. And they say that your body can have memory, and so creating a memory of the tangle is a really wonderful thing because then if you're ever tangling and you kind of are stumped of what to put in there, your body might remember this tangle. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. And now over in here, what we're going to do is we're going to start to work around the tail. So just to give you an idea, so I'm never going to go through that tail. I'm going to always let that tail be foremost in the piece here. You know, we have to find these little tricks in order to make tangles work for us. And this is one of those tricks that I really enjoy using because graphite is such a wonderful tool when you need it. Same thing over here. You can see that I'm just going to work around what's there. and make it look as though that tangle is just continuing underneath the bird, which is really fun. So you go ahead and do yours. I'm going to do mine. And then when we come back, we're going to start to work with the bird. All right, so here we go. I'm going to start to do some inking in of this bird here. So I'm going to start just by going around and bringing in the tail, going around the top, turning my tile to make it work for my hand here, and coming back up and meeting. Now once I have that, we're going to bring the tangle printant into this, and printant is just a spiral. So I'm going to come to just above the midpoint here, and I'm going to start to build printant. So just a little spiral here coming in and then I'm going to go ahead and work my way back out. Once I have that spiral in there, I'm going to go ahead and start to bring some feathers into the piece here. So I'm going to come in, drop down and curve off, drop down and curve off and one more time and curve off. Now I'm going to bring in some auras because auraing is always a good idea. It makes anything look more interesting that we tangle. When I was in my 
teacher training, they said, when in doubt, aura out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come around the top of the bird and do a nice aura here. And I'm going to let it connect to where the feathers are. Once I have that, I'm going to do a nice little beak here. And then I'm going to do an aura of that beak. And then I'll do a soft smiley face just for the eye. So there's our bird looking so sweet and lovely. Go ahead and finish up yours. Have some fun with this one. And then when we come back, we're going to start to add in a little bit of ink to our string. So let's go ahead and ink in our string here. You're going to see me come along the bottom line of where the bird is. And in full Holly Baugh fashion coming out the other side there. And then I'm going to go ahead and start to come down and bring in that really nice string that we started with. I'm just picking up my pen, making it work. Same thing over here. And same thing on the other side. Taking your time. Just like so. Now that I have that, I am going to add something similar above my bird here. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little bit of an arc here, and this is going to kind of mimic what we have down in burst, but we're going to do it in triangular fashion here. So I'm just going to go ahead and start by doing a soft arch, just like so. Once I have that, I'm going to go into the center, and I'm going to do my dots, and I'm going to connect. And then I'm going to come up, out, and over, and really bring in that element that mimics what we have in here. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine, and then our next tangle is going to be over here. We're going to learn a tangle called Maggie May. So this is a really fun tangle that was a part of Inktober this year, and I thought it was super, super fun. So we are going to learn the tangle Maggie May. And Maggie May starts with a circle, and then an aura. And then for me, the way that I like to do it is I start by bringing out some lines that are about the same length, just like so. Once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and start to build my petals. And you can see that I'm going to do my north, my south, my east, and my west first. Always makes it easier for me. And then I'll come in and do my diagonals just like so. Now once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and look at these V's that are happening. And let's go ahead and zoom in on this. So you can see that I have these V's or little valleys all around. All I'm going to do is I'm going to aura inside of each of these V's here. And then I'm going to close them off with a soft, rounded edge. Now once I have that rounded off in there, I'm going to go ahead and start to build. Now normally she just comes right off the top and builds a triangle, but I'm going to leave a little space in there, like so. And it almost gives this a star-like feel, which is very cool. I can see this being a fantastic Christmas card 
right here. Super easy tangle that you can do so much with, just like so. Okay, so there's my star of Maggie May. Now you can go around Maggie May and add some circles in between if you like, if that speaks to you. It's always a fun way to embellish it and bring some fun into it. Okay, so we're going to take this and bring it into our piece, but we're going to do a half Maggie May. So I'm going to take this off and bring in our composition here and zoom out just a little bit, if it'll allow me. <laughs> And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn my tile upside down here so that I can work from this corner. So the way that I'm going to start is I'm going to come in and I'm going to do a nice arch. I'll go ahead and do another arch right over the top just to give this some interest. Now once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and start to bring in the petals of Maggie Mae. So I'll start just by coming in. I like to make a little dot so that I know where I'm starting. So there's my first petal. And then I'm going to do another petal right next to it. And I'll go ahead and do another dot. And then I'll do another one right over here. Now once I've got that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start to create an aura around Maggie Mae. So you're going to see me come in and start to bring in an aura. And you can see that my aura is stopping just before I get to the bottom there. Now once I have that aura, I'm going to start to bring in the next set of auras, right? This is going to be for the triangles. There's one, there's two, here comes half of three and half of four. I'm going to round it off, rounding this one off. You can turn it on its side to make it work for you if, if you like. Okay, so there's our first set of triangles for Maggie Mae. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go right above it and you're going to see me start to bring in that second set of triangles here. Trying to make my triangles about the same size. This one's going to go off the side a little bit. And then here comes this one right over here. Now you can see that I'm trying to get kind of close to where I am up at the top. I'm going to continue to add a couple more triangles in here. So you're going to see me make a little dot here and I'm going to aura those triangles that are right over here. And this is going to give this kind of a stained glass feel. You can see that I'm using those triangles as a place to start. Just like so. Now once I've got that, I'm going to go over to the side here and let this kind of roll off. And then I'm going to come over here and let this one roll off. Now if you want to, you can add some circles into this. And so with all of my triangles that are pointing outward, I'm going to add a circle or an orb. And we want these orbs to be about the same size. Now once I have my orbs in, I'm going to go inside of these triangles and I'm going to start to use the same technique that we used down here in Burst. So let's go ahead and zoom in on that. So let me start right here. All I'm going to do in each of my triangles is I'm going to do a dot and then I'm going to do those aura lines and connect it to the edges. I'll even do it with the ones that are facing downward as well. The closer to the edge you can get them, the easier it is. But you can see how that brings some really nice dimension into this. I'm even going to do it 
in the ones down below. Take your time with these. Remember to breathe. So you get the basic idea here of where I'm going. So even the ones on the edges where it falls off, you can do a half. And even over here, I can do a half. Okay? So go ahead and finish up yours. And then we'll meet back up and we'll start to work on the centerpiece. Let's talk about the centerpiece in here. I'm going to turn my tiles so that this is now straight and I can work in it. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come in about three quarters of an inch and make a little dot here and three quarters of an inch and make a little dot here. I'm going to use those as my guides here and I'm going to start to just go right underneath them and create a rectangle. And you'll notice that the rectangle doesn't touch the bottom either. And you can see that I'm working with my graphite pencil as I do this. Let me go ahead and zoom in on that a little bit more. Now, once I have those pieces in there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do these really soft little C curves underneath that rectangle that are going to go like this. Once I have those C curves in there, you can see it's like an elongated C on each side. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to step down a little bit and I'm going to start to create a little flag and I'm going to let it connect to that C curve. I'll go ahead and do another one right over here, just like so. Once you've got it the way that you want it, you can go ahead and start to ink in your flag or your banner, whatever you want to call it. And I always go in and do it the same way that I started. For me, it just helps me to have a felt memory inside of my body as I'm creating. Making that soft C curve creating that flag. Same thing on the other side. Just like so. So go ahead and finish up yours. I'm going to finish up mine and then when we come back we're going to talk about lettering. So some of you may have done my Word of the Year class or other classes where I've used lettering and you know that I like to just do a very simple way of lettering here. And one of the lessons that I've learned from my other teachers is that whenever you're doing lettering, you're actually drawing your words, not writing them. And so for me, this class was based on the idea of gratitude. However, you may want to put in a different word in here. And so I want to leave you with a little bit of space to do that. So I'm just going to do a demo for gratitude or grateful. And you can decide if you want to join in or you could do a different word. But you can see that I'm doing all uppercase for my lettering. And you can see that I'm going nice and slow as I space it out. Hopefully it's going to fit. <laughs> There's always that too. Little tight, but it's going to work. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on the back end of all of this. Now I'm going to take my pen and do this, but I want to show you some other uh, pieces too as we go through the class. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to start by inking in my letters first and you want to try to get your letters to line up with each other as much as you can now once I've got all of my letters inked in I'm gonna to start to add a little bit of that weight on the back of it. And it just gives it a really easy way to do some lettering. If 
by just adding that weight in there. Now in this A, I'm going to put a little circle in the center just to make it look kind of fancy. And I'll do the same thing on the E. Okay, so there's one. Now I did do a copy of this class and I did one with peace. And then I also did another one with serenity. I thought that that was a really nice word to use as well. So all I'm saying is, is that you can try different words in the center, but I thought because we're getting so close to Thanksgiving, it might be a really nice holiday card to send out to your friends and family. Okay. All right. So with that said, go ahead and do your lettering. And then when we come back, we're going to start to work a little bit more on the bird. So I have this little space that's right in front of the bird and there's a really excellent tangle that we can use for this area and it's called Verap. And so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to start at about the midpoint of the bird and I'm going to do a line that auras that line right there. I'm going to step down a little bit and I'm going to do another one and then I'm going to do one more right here. Once I have that, I'm going to come out a little bit and complete that aura down and in. Same thing over here. And same thing over here. I'm going to do a little arch that comes off and attaches. Another arch that attaches. And then another arch that's going to attach to this area over here. And I just love the way that that feels. It's got a really nice softness to it. I'm going to let that close off right in there. It's a really pretty tangle and it's great for putting into small places. So go ahead and put in your verap. And if you don't have room for verap, don't worry about it. It's not a major part of the piece. All right, so have fun with it. And then when we come back, we're going to start in with color. So let's go ahead and start to focus in on our first tangle. I'm going to pick up some Spanish orange, PC1003, orange, which is PC918, and magenta, PC930. For those of you who don't have Prismacolors, I'm looking for an orange, a warm yellow, and a nice cold red. Now once you have your colors ready, we're going to start with the yellow first. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by coming to the right hand side of that diamond and dusting in a little bit of yellow on the top and the bottom of this side, leaving a little bit of white in the center. I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. And then I'm going to let go of those colors and I'm going to start to bring in magenta. And I'm going to start by bringing in a little bit of magenta at the top and on the bottom of the left hand side of that diamond. I'll come over to the right and give this a little bit of interest over here as well. And you can see that I'm going nice and light with that magenta. I'm going to come back in and I'm going to press a little bit harder right up at the top and right down below. Same thing here, and same thing here. Now to give this a little bit of interest, I'm going to pick up the orange, and you can see that my orange is really well sharpened up here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start to blur out a little bit of that magenta, and I'm going to blur it out over here as well. Now once I have that, I'm also going to take a little bit of that orange and start to bring it into just the points of where we have that diamond. And you can already see that this is starting to have a lot of dimension and sheen to it. I'm going to pick back up that magenta and I'm going to start to lightly shade inside of the diamond and you'll notice that I'm going to leave a light source in that upper left hand corner. Still going nice and light here. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to start to press a little bit harder along the black line on the right hand side. So I'm just staying on the right hand side. Once I have that 
I'm going to pick up a little bit of that orange and start to blend out where that heavier press of magenta is over the top of that lighter magenta. I'm going to bring in a little bit of yellow and then that way I get this really pretty ombre of color in here. And that gives this such a nice sheen. Isn't that amazing how that went from really being flat to already having so much uh, dimension. So you can go in and play with it as much as you want. I'm going to go in and do all of my diamonds just like that. You go ahead and do yours as well. So it really starts to bring your eye down into this corner here, doesn't it? I love all that wonderful sheen in there. So let's go ahead and turn our piece here and we're going to start to carry these same colors to the other side. And let's go ahead and focus in on Maggie Mae. So I'm going to start by using a little bit of that yellow and dusting it in and you'll notice that I'm going to immediately start to bring in a little bit of a light source over on that left hand side. Going nice and light with that yellow. Once I have that yellow in there as a foundation, I'm going to start in with a little bit of the red. I'm going to come in and start to bring in a really nice shadow. And I would say that I'm starting about halfway through. Now you'll notice that I'm not pressing hard on this. I'm actually just creating a soft foundation for that shadow. I'm going to start to press a little bit harder right along the black line and right along the edge of the piece just to build a little bit of drama here. Once I've got that in there I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick up a little bit of the orange. Now you'll notice that I'm going to use the orange inside of the red and really kind of soften where that dark red is meeting the light red. I'm going to start to push that forward and I'm going to start to soften up where that light red is meeting the yellow. So this is already starting to gain a lot of warmth. And then I'll pick back up that yellow again and I'll start to blur the edge of where the orange is meeting the yellow. And then you'll notice that I'll start to fall backwards into where the red and the orange are meeting. And the reason why I'm doing this is because that yellow has a ton of wax in it. And what that does is it makes it look really, really soft and buttery in there. But I don't lose any of the intensity that I'm looking for. Really starts to glow so pretty. If you want to add even more intensity to it, you can come back in with a little bit of that magenta and just start to bring it along the edge. But I just love the way that that looks. So go ahead and work on your gemstone and then when we come back we're going to use a little bit more of that warmth in the piece. So for this next part, you're going to want to have your pencils really well sharpened up because we're going to be working in small spaces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the magenta first. And I'm going to start in this row where we've got our first set of triangles here. I'm going to start by coming in on the right hand side and adding in a little bit of red until about the halfway point. So you're going to see me start to work through these two right here. You can come into the side one on the left hand side, but for this one it won't be there because the part of the triangle is off the page. I'm going to go ahead and start to bring in a little bit of orange into where that red is meeting the white. And just start to get a little bit of drama there. I'll come in and bring a little bit of yellow, but leaving just a little bit of white left over. I'll do the same thing over here and bring a little bit of orange just along the edge. 
Now in the upper pieces I'm going to do the same thing except the triangles that are facing down are going to be a different color. So all the triangles that are facing up are going to get a little bit of that red. and then they're going to get a little bit of the orange and a little bit of that yellow. So go ahead and start to do yours. I'm going to finish up mine and then when we come back we're going to start to carry that color one more time throughout the piece. So we're going to look into where the banner is here and I still have my pencils really well sharpened up. I'm going to start with my yellow first and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start right underneath where my banner is and I'm using the side of my pencil. You can see that it's nice and long there. I can go ahead and just lay the side of the pencil down and get a lot of color put into a small space fairly quickly. So just rubbing the side of the pencil into the page very very lightly here. You're going to see me start to work into the corners here just a little bit and I'll turn the tile to make it work for my hands here. So I'm just working along and getting into that yellow. Now once I've had a chance to do that I'm going to start to bring in a little bit of that orange and I'm going to let it come right underneath where the banner is. I'm going to bring a little bit of that orange underneath where the little side of the flag is in here and into where some of that indentation is. You're going to see me do the same thing on the opposite side here, just bringing a little bit of that orange in there. If you want to, you can even bring just a hint of it to the top. Now once I've had a chance to do that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick up a little bit of that magenta and start to bring in a little bit of intensity right underneath the banner. And this is just going to get that banner to start glowing off of the page here. I'm going to let it come around that little C curve. Same thing over here. Letting it come up and over and up and over. I'm going to pick back up that yellow and I'm going to start to do little circles to kind of blur that color and really soften it up. Starting to work in over here and over in here just softening all of that color in there. letting it work its way out. And you'll notice that as I'm getting further and further away from that banner, I'm lightening up the touch on that pencil. So that means I'm just not pressing as hard. But I'm using that waxy pencil to get a little bit of softness in that background. You could even start to pick up a little bit of white if you wanted to just to make things a little bit more buttery around the edges. And what I mean by that is, so I've got my Prismacolor PC938 and what I can do is I can just take a little bit of it and you'll notice that it really takes that color and smooths it out. So if you have paper that has a little bit of tooth to it or texture, this will take it and soften it up a little bit. So you go ahead and do your background. I'm going to start to do mine. And then when we come back, we're going to add a little bit of our own texture to that background. Have fun with this. Remember, we're here to play and have a good time. 
So many of you have done wallpaper with me before, and so we're going to add in a little bit of wallpaper into the piece. And for those of you who have never done it before, it's where you tangle with the color that you're coloring with. You can see that my pencil is really nice and sharp here, and we're going to do some spirals in and around our little banner that we have in the center. We're going to keep them on the sides just so that it doesn't get too busy, but it is going to add some nice texture to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of the orange here and I'm just going to start by making some fairly large spirals in the side areas of where the banner is. And these spirals, if you go nice and slow, you'll have some really nice ones. I've done a nice large one there and I'm going to do another large one over here. I always start with my biggest ones first and then that way when I'm ready to do the smaller ones, it will have a little space for them. So I always do my larger ones first. And you can see that by tangling with that same color that you're coloring with, it makes it really interesting. So going nice and slow as you do these spirals because our lines have a tendency to give us away here. Let another one come up in here. And then I'm going to start to bring in some smaller ones. And this is where I think it really makes this tangle very unique. If they all end up the same size, I just don't feel it's very interesting. I'll come over here and do some smaller ones over here and over here. And I think that's about as many as I want to do on this particular piece. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine and then when we come back we're going to start to introduce a new color to the piece. So let's bring in the blues, shall we? I'm going to bring in some denim blue, which is PC1101, and then I have this really beautiful light cerulean blue, which is PC904. Now, if you're just working with a regular set of color pencils, I'm looking for a light blue and a dark blue. For those of you who don't have the light cerulean in the Prismacolor set, you can always substitute it with light aqua. It's just fine. But I just loved it because it had kind of a periwinkle color. And then the denim blue is just a really nice navy color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by focusing in on that first tangle that we did called Burst. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in with a little bit of that darker blue first and just add a little bit on the outside edge. I'll come in with a little bit of that lighter blue and blend it out and you'll notice that I'm going to leave just a little bit of lightness in that upper corner there. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Really nice little dark blue spot leaving the highlight up top, coming in with a little bit of that lighter blue to blur it out, and then I'll do the same thing over here. So now I'm going to have that light source facing downward, and then I'll go in with that lighter blue and soften it up. If you want to add a little bit of drama to this, you can always add a little bit of darkness right on the edges. And that's how we're going to give this a little bit of interest. Notice the difference between these two here. It really gives a lot of life to this piece. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to do mine and then when we come back, we're going to bring some blue into that bird really love how that blue starts to bring so much life into this corner down here. It's so pretty. So we're going to start to take some of that light blue and we're going to start to bring it into the bird here. So I'm just going to start by taking that pencil and laying it down on its side here and rubbing that pencil into the paper very, very lightly. I'm going to start to create a little bit of a shadow going around the wing here nice and soft. 
I'll take a little bit of that blue and start to bring it into where Pronton is. Going nice and light. And then I'll also start to bring it down into the wing, but you'll notice that I'm going to leave the tips of the wings white. Once I've got that color in there, I'm going to switch out into the denim blue. And I'm going to start to bring in a little bit of a shadow very lightly because the denim blue has a lot of pigment to it. And I'll start to bring it around the wing. Just like so. I'm going to come into the center of where we have our spring here and start to let it work its way out just a little bit. I'll come in and press just a skosh harder. And then I'm going to start to bring in a little bit of that dusting down the side. I'll come in over here and add a little bit more and a little bit more. Once I've got that, I'm going to pick up that white pencil that we were talking about earlier, PC938, and I'm going to start to blur out that blue a little bit and start to push around that pigment. You can see that I'm using little circles to really get this kind of soft, dusty feel. starting to work with that really nice deep denim blue in here. Love the way that denim blue loves to move around a little bit. I'm going to take a little bit of that and start to bring it into the center of Pronton and work my way out. You can see that I'm still using that circle technique where I start to bring it outward. I'm going to start to bring it down over the denim blue again. Little circles. You can see that it's moving that pigment around. Really gives it a painterly feel. Same thing over here, just little circles. And getting right back into the center again. And I just love the way that that starts to give that a softness. I'm going to come in with a little bit more of that blue right underneath where the tail is. You're going to see that I'm getting into this area right in here. I'm using that lighter blue first and you're going to see that I'm going to leave the tip of the tail nice and light. Once I've got that, I'm going to start to pick up that denim blue again, that's the darker blue, and I'm going to start to give a little bit of a shadow back here. Once I've got that shadow the way that I want it, I can add a little bit underneath the wings here. And then I'll go ahead and add a little bit of that white in there, getting it to be really soft. really loving the way that that looks. That bird has such an electric feel, doesn't it? I hope you enjoy it too. So take your time, play, make your bird the way that you want it to be, and then when we come back we're going to start to move that blue around to the other side of the piece. So I'm over by Maggie May here, and I'm going to start in with a little bit of that darker blue first. And I'm starting to work inside of those little orbs that we have over here. Now your orbs may be smaller than mine, and that's just fine. 
you can just go ahead and do half of the orb. But if you have these larger orbs that I have, you can go ahead and start to bring in a little bit of that lighter blue as well, just to give it a little bit of interest. Just softening it up a little bit. Just like so. If you want to get a little bit more dramatic, you can come back in and press a little bit harder on the edge just to give it a little bit of a pop. The other thing that I'm going to do with that blue is I'm going to come back to our lettering here. And I'm going to start with a little bit of that darker blue at the bottom. And then I'm going to pick up a little bit of that lighter blue and start to let that kind of pull up towards the top. But you'll notice that I'm leaving white up at the top. And that really has a nice feel to it. I hope you like it too. So go ahead and finish yours up. And then when we come back, we're going to start to introduce a new color into the piece. So let's bring in the greens, shall we? I have a light green and a dark green here. I'm going to be working with lime peel green, which is PC1005. And then I also have in my hand the grass green, which is PC909. You can tell that I like this pencil an awful lot. So what we're going to do is we're going to start just by bringing in a little bit of interest into our triangles here. So I'm going to start just by coming in and adding a little bit of that lighter green right in the corners of these upper pieces. Just like so. I'm going to go ahead and start to bring in a little bit more of that darker green right in the corners. Now once I have that, I'm going to come back in with that lighter green and I'm going to start to blur the edges just a little bit. Leaving just enough white to keep it interesting, but not too, too much. So you go ahead and finish up yours. I'm going to finish up mine and then when we come back, we're going to add a little bit more to this. So before we add any green into these center pieces, I'm going to add just a very narrow aura into where we have our petals here. I really want these petals to stand out and when we start adding in the black later on, this is really going to help bring your eye back to this area in here. So I'm just going to start by filling in those auras with a little bit of that black. just to make those petals stand out. Now once I've had a chance to get these petals to really have a graphic feel to them, I'm going to start to bring in some green into the center of these. So I'm going to pick up that really nice light green and I'm just going to shade down one side of the petal here. I'm going to take a little bit of that darker green and I'm going to add a little shadow, mm, excuse me, to the uh, to the petal here. And then I'll blur that out. And I really love how that brings a lot of drama into the center of the piece. So go ahead and finish up yours. I'm going to finish up mine. And then we're going to start to bring that green up into our banner.
So I'm just going to bring a little bit of a blush of green right into the edges of our banner here. And you can see that this is just going to make that kind of stand out a little bit. So I'm just going to bring those in here. And you can see that I'm using that light green first. And then I'm going to come around the edges with just a little bit of that grass green. Just to bring a little bit of definition in. I'll take a little bit of that lighter green and I'll blur out where that darker green is meeting the lighter green. And you can see that that's already starting to bring in a little bit of interest into the banner. If you want to, you could even pick up a little bit of your white, making sure that there's no blue on it, and soften that out just a little bit more. You could even go into your letters if you wanted to and do a little bit of the white in there as well. So go ahead, continue to work on your banner, have some fun, relax your shoulders, soften your jaw, see if you're still breathing, <laughs> all those things, and I'll see you in a minute. So I'm going to bring a little bit of that green into the corner here just to give a little bit of interest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by bringing a little bit of that light green in here and I'm going to zoom in on that and a little bit down at the bottom. I'm going to come over here and then I'm going to let go of that lighter green and I'm going to start to bring the darker green in. And you're going to see that I'm going to do the same thing with that darker green, just leaving a little lightness in the center. Once I have that, I'm going to start to press a little bit harder in the corners. And I'm just going to add a touch of it into the lighter pieces as well. I'm going to go ahead and pick up a little bit of that light green and start to blur out some of that darker green. And I'll also come into this area right in here and give that a little bit of interest. I'm going to take a little bit of that darker green and start to bring in a little bit of a light source here. I'm going to come into the corner and start to bring in a little bit of pressure into that corner. Picking up a little bit of that lighter green and blurring the rest out. I just love the way that this looks. It almost looks like an emerald, which is so beautiful. The other place I'm going to bring some of this green is down here in Verap. And I'm going to use the side of the pencil and just add a little bit of a shadow in here with Verap. And I'll take a little bit of that darker green and start to give this a little bit of depth. Same thing in here. And then I'll go ahead and I'll start to pick up a little bit of white and blur those two into each other. And I just love the way that 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 pairing of color really works together. So go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine. And then when we come back, we're going to start to add some darkness into this piece that's really going to make this whole thing pop. Let's add some shading into the piece here. I've got my graphite pencil in my hand here, and I'm going to add in just a little bit of that graphite all along the side of my banner in here. And what this is going to do is it's going to give a little bit of depth around the edges of our banner. You can see that I've picked up my blending stump here and if you don't have a blending stump you could always get a q-tip out of the bathroom and that works really well as a blending stump. So you can see that I'm working in little circles here and bringing a little bit of detailing into the piece. 
And then once I've got that the way that I want it, I'm going to start to come back in and bring a little bit of pressure right along the edge here just to give that a little bit more pop. I can come in and start to blur that out as well, giving it a little bit of softness. So really just getting in there and adding a little bit of that graphite is going to really give this a little bit more interest. So go ahead, work with yours. I'm going to finish up mine and then when we come back we're going to do a little bit of graphite around our bird. I'm going to bring in just a touch of graphite around our bird here and I'm going to start by bringing it in near Verap. And so I'm going to do a touch of it at the top and the bottom of these little stem pieces and you can see that I'm going to blur those out really nicely leaving a little bit of lightness in the center. I'm also going to bring in a little bit of graphite into Pronton here and you can see that I'm kind of choosing little spots to add it into. I'll also add a little bit into the wings too. You can also bring in a little bit of graphite around the belly of the bird just to give it a little bit of interest. And I'll take a little bit of my blending stump and blur that out as well. I'm also going to just bring a touch of graphite right in here behind where Pronton is just to keep things interesting. One of my favorite parts to shade on this piece is over in our burst. And burst really comes to life with a little bit of graphite. So I'm just going to take a little bit of graphite and put it in the corners of where we have our crescent moons here. Now watch what happens when we do this. I just love this. So I'm going to go ahead and blend that out a little bit. And I just love the look of Burst with a little bit of graphite in it. Look at the difference between the one on the right and the one on the left. Isn't that amazing how just a little graphite can do so much? So you go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine. And then we're going to bring just a touch of graphite into Maggie Mae. To shade with Maggie Mae, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by working in these little valleys that I have around my petals here. You can see that I'm just very, very lightly bringing in some graphite with my graphite pencil. And I'm going in with that tortillon now. And I'm going to leave the points of this petal nice and light. Once I have that, I'm going to work inside of where these little triangles are and I'll just do a demo with this one. You're going to see me bring a little bit of graphite into each of the points here and then I'm going to blur it out leaving a little bit of lightness in the center. You can see the difference between these two almost right away. So I'm going to do that in all of my triangles here. You go ahead and do it in yours. I'm going to add in one little last piece of graphite. You can see that I'm going into those little narrow areas where we've got these little narrow auras around our banner. And I'm just dusting those in with a little bit of graphite in here. And then I'll come in with the tortillon or the blending stump and add in a little bit of that graphite. You can see that that just gives it a little bit of interest. You know me, I don't like to leave anything kind of untouched in a piece. I like to have everything have a little bit of something going on in it if I can. So you go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine. And then when we come back, we're going to bring in some white highlighting pen. 
I've picked up my white highlighting pen. This is the Jelly Roll from Sakura. I happen to have a 10 here that I like to work with, so you can grab whatever one you have or your favorite white highlighting pen. And I usually get my pen started on my finger just to um, get it going. It seems to like that the most. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to make these little triangular like shapes inside of burst here and then I'm going to add a little bit of a dot right underneath it and that's how I'm going to do my highlighting on this particular tangle and I think it just adds a level of shininess to this piece that I really really like. Now I'm also going to turn my tile and come over to the other side here and add in a little bit of a boomerang into this one can see this kind of looks like a boomerang. And then I'll go ahead and put a little dot down below just to give that a little bit of interest. You can also bring in a little bit of white into the petals where you have the darkest color if you've got enough of it. The other thing you can do is add a little bit of a dot into your triangles to let them have a little bit more shimmer. You can also come up into your orbs and give them a little bit of a smiley face in there just to give it some interest as well. I'm going to turn the piece back over and around the edge of my wing here I'm going to put in some white dots. And I think that that gives it a really nice feeling. You can even come up into this in here and put a little bit of a little dot just to give it some interest. So go ahead and have fun with your white highlighting pen and play. So this is where things get interesting. You know, oftentimes I will leave a piece nice and light or I will bring in kind of a graphic feel and bring in the black pen. Now you may decide that you really like to have this with the white and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just different and I really like both options here. Now I am going to show you a demo on how to do this piece with the uh, black pen so that it's almost like we have a nightingale here but if you want to leave it nice and light you're welcome to do that as well. So many of you know that I love to work with the IdentiPen from Sakura. It has a really nice uh, thick nib on it, which makes it a lot easier to do this next part. If you don't have an IdentiPen, you could always grab a Sharpie in a pinch. Or if you have a thicker Micron or a graphics pen, that's a great one as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by coming in around the bird here. And so you can see that there's all this negative space around our bird. So I'm just going to go in and start to fill in the space around the bird. And that's going to start to give it that really beautiful graphic quality. So you can see that I'm taking my time and just starting to work around the bird here. And you'll see that I'm going to fill in that space. For me, I always like to do a little bit of an outline whenever I'm working on something just to protect the thing that I don't want to have any of that black coloring in and that way I can really get in there and have some fun. So you go ahead and do yours. I'm going to finish up mine. The next place where I'm going to add a little bit of black is in between the burst and you can see that there's all these negative spaces in between the bursts here and so all I'm going to do is I'm going to start by bringing in that black right in between where the diamonds are and fill those in and you can see that I'm being nice and careful around those diamonds and using the pen to protect the areas that I don't want to do any kind of coloring in. 
and you can see that it's already starting to really pop that tangle forward and give it quite the graphic feel. So you can go ahead and do yours now and just, you know, be mindful of where your pen is. Take your time with it. There's no rush here. So really just enjoy what you're doing and I really love to work with the puddle pen because I find it to be very relaxing and meditative. So just let yourself get into the groove. I'm just loving the way that's looking. I hope that you do too. So let's go over to see Maggie May here. I'm going to turn this over and you can see that I've got all these negative spaces in between the triangles here. And I'm just going to bring in a sample piece so that you can see how I did this. I brought in that black all the way around the triangles here and all the way around the orbs. So I'm going to just start by coming in and bringing that black into the valleys of Maggie May here. And you can see that I'm just really taking my time and starting to bring definition into the piece here. So I'm going to start to work in all of those areas in between the triangles to really get this to have a really nice stained glass window feel. It's such a gorgeous tangle to work with and to give it this graphic feel, I feel like it gives it even more interest. So I'm just going to continue to work through mine. You go ahead and work through yours and then when we come back we're going to do some finishing up. So here we are. We made it all the way through. Look at us. Woohoo! So I've gone ahead and I've added my chop, which is my initial right here in the corner here. And I've been enjoying doing that a little bit more quietly in my pieces lately. And I hope that you've been enjoying that too. If you like the class, please give it a thumbs up or leave a nice review. Even better, please hit the subscribe button and then that way you'll be notified every time I add a class to our page here. I'd love to see your creations over on our Facebook page at the Tangled Yogi Art Community page. If you just answer the security questions you're in and you get to share your work and see how other people did the class as well. I hope that you have a happy and healthy Thanksgiving. I loved teaching this class and I hope that you enjoyed it. Thanks so much everyone and I look forward to tangling with you soon. Bye for now.